Konnichiwa. Right on schedule. What makes the Dread Edict special? The answer lies in this really unique build I'm going to give to you. Let's go. This is the new Dread Edict Exotic SVD Marksman Rifle. It's probably sitting in your stash, and you're probably wondering what you're going to do with it. Builds with the purpose usually perform better. Some crowd control, some debuff enemies, some one-shot targets, and many are all about DPS. So what's the Dread's purpose? It hits hard as hell, but if you want to one-shot chain kill elites, you're probably better off with the Nemesis, Mantis, or White Death. But fear not, the Dread Edit can still do this. This, and a whole lot of this. But wait, is that special? Because my non-exotic SVD can do that, and that, and a whole lot of that too. Wait, what? The Dread Edict dishes a higher crit value than the non-exotic SVD, but in most cases, you're better off with Lucky Shot and the larger mag for better DPS, even if you land 100% of your headshots. Let's take a closer look at the weapon's talent. At full 20 stacks, you get 40% weapon damage and 100% headshot damage. Headshot kills restore all bullets to the mag. Reloading removes your stacks and gives you bonus armor. MMR loadouts only give you 155 total rounds. The weapon has 260 RPM. We don't have to do any math for you to see the issue, right? No matter how you make your build, if you don't land headshots, running out of ammo is a real possibility. Headshots give you to max 20 stacks with the fewest amount of rounds, and you need to land the kill shot on the head to get back your ammo. If you miss, you don't get ammo. If you kill an enemy with a body shot, no ammo. If an ally steals your kill, no ammo. That third point is the doozy. Focus firing on priority targets is a great squad tactic. And chances are your teammates are using weapons with higher RPM, better handling, and they don't have to worry much about ammo issues. That's increasing their odds of getting the kill instead of you. What I am trying to explain is that I think this weapon is better suited for solo players. You do not want to weaken the enemy just so your teammate can steal the kill. You need that headshot kill to maintain your highest damage and to replenish your ammo. If you're grouped up a lot, you might want to consider the SVD with Lucky Shot. I'm not saying you can't use the Dread Edict in team play. I'm saying you might like Lucky Shot for team play better. So what makes the Dread Edict special? Build diversity. It brings so much power to the build, it really opens up your build options. To help demonstrate what I mean, let me ask this question. What makes a great SVD build? For starters, land your shots and don't run out of ammo, right? 
Then, it's about being able to stay out of cover for long periods of time to acquire targets and put out shots. Well, what about damage? Think about it this way. No matter how hard your build hits, it's always going to take a few rounds to bring down elites. And heroic content has a ton of them. If you want to one-shot chain kill elites, then you want to run the Mantis, Nemesis, or the White Death instead. Look, the strongest SVD build in the game takes down heroic elites in two shots. That's the strongest SVD. The build that I'm loving right now does it in three shots, and it brings so much more to the table, including about 1 million in armor, 50% hazard protection, 52% protection from elites, and 47% weapon handling, 57% accuracy, and 82% stability. This build has all of that survivability and only needs one more round to take down elites. And with a 260 RPM, three shots in succession feels really natural. And with each kill, we prevent reloading and get all our ammo back. But if you want the hardest hitting all red dread edit build, it's really easy to make. You can run aces and get pretty close to it, but the weapons handling issues cannot be ignored, especially for console players. So if you want the strongest build, it's important you don't run the aces gear set because you need the extra slots for weapon handling. Check out this video for more details on that build. So the goal for this build is to give you the highest possible damage and protection. But let's face it, in gameplay, we're not landing 100% of our SVD shots on the head like we might do with the Mantis or Nemesis. I'm 119th in the world for headshot kills and I'll be the first to say that I don't. So weapon handling is going to be a major component to the build. So much damage comes from the Dread Edict and the perfect chest and backpack talents. You don't really need much more than that. We have 10% damage to targets out of cover here on the weapon. So to stack multiplicative damage, I traded the crits out for 13% damage to armor. Dropping the crits was the best thing I could do for the build. This opened up a ton of slots and a full tilt headshots are hitting over 4 million. That's not even a crit. Three pieces of Raleigh will get you to 18% damage to armor, but it turns out Perfect Opportunistic gives us a higher output. And with this setup, we're basically at 1 million armor. That's important because Dread Edict dishes out bonus armor on reload that is based off of our total armor value. And this bonus armor is more helpful than you will realize at first. It's why I don't have to pump anything into recovery with this build. You're mostly playing from cover and at distance, and the bonus armor is enough to absorb damage while my basic Healer does the rest behind the scenes. The protection from elites and Hasbro fills in the gaps. Everything is in balance with this build. Power, accuracy, survivability, you have it all. But you might want to tweak it for the way you play. I'll explain why my values are what they are, but you can't go less or more on anything. The chest piece is critical and I recommend the pristine example with perfect focus instead of braced. You're forced into scope with the SVD, so you might as well use one of the strongest talents in the game. This gives you 60% weapon damage. I have Hasbro, Handling, and Protection from Elites. Fire and Bleed keeps you from going into scope, so Hasbro is great for MMRs. Protection from Elites let us stay out of cover longer. The backpack is Uzina Getica with perfect opportunistic for 15% amplified damage. The armor stats are helping us out a ton. You do want some armor on your build. Try more if you like. Vigilance does give you more damage, but opportunistic doesn't get to disabled when we take damage. So we are able to stay out of cover, take damage, and still maintain our damage figures. I have handling, protection from elites, and headshot damage. Originally, I had even more handling and has pro on the build than you see here. I rebalanced the stats after a while and felt this is about right. Also because of the skill choice. Feel free to add more of each as you see fit, but I am running the booster hive that's giving me 22% more handling and has pro than you see on the stats. These are the contractor's gloves for 8% damage to armor and I have weapon handling. Be sure to check out this blue screen build too. I made it in the build lab on Twitch where all of my builds are made and tested live with the community and unedited gameplay. Be sure to follow me over there too. Shout out to all the banditos of Texas Players Club for supporting the channel and the Division 2 community in all the ways that you do. To say thank you, I create extra builds like this one for Texas Players Club as member perks. You can find all of your member perks in this playlist at the top of my channel homepage. Make sure your notifications are turned on too. If you're not part of Texas Players Club, it's time you join this strong, positive community.
Link here in the corner and in the description area below. The mask is special. It's the chill out mask with hazard protection and I rerolled the core to weapon damage. The 5% more total armor gets us almost to 1 million armor and I have 2 protection from elite mods. Don't worry if your mods aren't perfect. You'll be just fine. This mask is available in the open world, countdown, and named item caches. I got two just today. It is unclear if this is something the devs will fix again or not, so farm it while you can. If you don't have this mask, you have so many options, it's crazy. You can run a Providence, another Raldi, a Gila, or even better, put a Walker here and run the Fox's knee pads. I am running two pieces of Walker for the damage to armor. The holster has handling and hazard protection. The knee pads have headshot damage and more has pro. Put handling here if you need it. The specialization is sharpshooter for more headshot damage and breathe control. It's also giving us a little more ammo back. You need the fixer. It's not strong, but it's perfect for the build as it is. I originally had the decoy, but the booster complements the build better. It's giving us a 22% buff to our handling and our hazard protection. Here are the stats. We're not a crit build. 206% headshot damage grows to 306% headshot damage with the weapon talent. We have 13% damage to armor, 10% damage to targets out of cover, 57% accuracy, 82% stability, and 47% handling. Almost 1 million in armor. 52% protection from elites and 50% hazard protection. Again, nothing about this build prevents you from running it with the team. I just think the weapon shines best solo because of that headshot kill for ammo mechanic. Check out this legendary blue screen exotic LMG build that debuffs the enemy and buffs your team. Uh -huh.